In this video, I'm going to classify amino acids based on their charge and their polarity. If you'd like to know more about amino acid structure and peptide bond formation, we already made a video on that's explaining that and I will add that to the description and at the end of the video if you'd like to watch that. But just as a quick reminder, this is what an amino acid looks like. All amino acids have three different parts that stay constant. That's the amine group right here, the hydrogen, and the carboxylic acid. And then they also have a side chain, which we'll call R. And that's what separates each amino acid from the other. The, other ex the, the only exception being proline, which actually connects the side chain to the amine group. But we'll go over that. So in this video, I will go over three different classifications. We have polar amino acids, nonpolar amino acids, and charged amino acids. And the charge group will also separate into basic and acidic. There are nine nonpolar amino acids, six polar amino acids, and five charged amino acids, three being basic and two being acidic. And those all add up to be the 20 amino acids we know. So just so that you don't see me drawing this group the whole time, I will only draw the side chain of each amino acid because as I said before, that's what separates each from each, each amino acid from the other. So what I will do is I will draw the R group and the first bond I have, this, this bond, I will just leave as a line and that will be the bond connecting to the main carbon. So let's start with the nonpolar amino acids. So as I said before, there are nine different nonpolar amino acids. Before I start, I'd like to clarify that this video's main purpose is to classify amino acids. I will give you some tips as to how to learn and memorize them, but again, the main purpose is classification. So for each amino acid, I will give you the three letter abbreviation, I will give you the one letter abbreviation, and then I will draw only the side chain, except for proline. For that one, I will actually draw the whole amino acid. So starting with our nonpolar amino acids, the simplest amino acid is glycine, and we abbreviate that as GLY or G. And its side chain is composed of just one hydrogen. So this amino acid would actually have two hydrogens in its structure. Next, we have alanine. That will be A, L, A. The one letter would be A. And in this one, we're going to have a carbon group. So CH3. Let me just fix this because I'm going to run out of space. Okay, this should be good now. So well, now we have valine. And that's going to be VAL. We abbreviate it with a V. And we're just adding two more carbon groups to alanine. So we have CH, we have a CH3 and a CH3. So, and they're both coming off the second carbon. The first carbon, of course, being the main carbon of the amino acid. Leucine, that would be L-E-U. The one letter is L. And now we're just adding one more carbon to valine, and that will be before this carbon. So we're going to CH2, CH, and then the same thing, CH3, CH3. And then we have isoleucine, so that will be I, L, E, and we abbreviate it with an I. And isoleucine is actually going to have the same structure as leucine, but we're going to change its shape. And that's what that iso means. It's, it's going to have a different arrangement of the carbons. And an easy way to think about this one is to think of valine and just add one carbon to one of the last branches. Okay, so that will go like this. We're going to have CH. That's going to split off into two, just like valine. So CH3 and CH2. And to that CH2, we're going to add one CH3. 
this is a little too close so I'm going to draw a line right here because that's, they're different so that would be isoleucine again the easy way to think about it is just to add one carbon to valine any either the any any of the of the branch ones in in the end now we have phenylalanine that would be p h e and we actually use f to abbreviate it because we're going to save the p for proline and an easy way to think about this one is to split the name into the two parts it represents we're going to have the phenyl part and the alanine part so you could just split it right here what you're going to do is you're going to draw alanine so that would be just the one carbon and we're going to make it CH2 because we're going to add something else to it and of course just based on the name what we're going to add is a phenyl group so that would just be this benzene group I have double bonds here now we have tryptophan tryptophan is probably the hardest amino acid to draw we abbreviated T RP and then we just use W we don't use T because we save the T for threonine and you'll see that later so tryptophan is actually going to have two connected ring groups and we're going to start with a carbon so CH2 then we're going to have the smaller ring and after that the bigger ring so we're going to have a pentagon and then a hexagon the tricky part is that the pentagon actually has a nitrogen a nitrogen group so you have to be careful with how you arrange it so we're going to do one two nitrogen and now we can close the pentagon so that would be one two three the hexagon is going to go connected to this carbon and this carbon so you can draw lines to the first one and the second one and then you can just close close the hexagon and now and now you need to add the double bond so we have one here one here one here and one here so you could think of this as a benzene group as it has the three double bonds and then you have a nitrogen and this other double bond moving on to methionine that would actually be m e t and m and its structure will be ch2 ch2 s ch3 and this is what we call a thioether because it just like an ether that will have two bonds next to it but in case of in instead of the s it would be a, an, an oxygen we call it thio which stands for the sulfur ether so it's two carbons the sulfur and then an, another carbon group and you can also try to, to remember it by the thio right here so thio ether methionine the last non-polar amino acid is proline that's going to be P R O and P again that's why we don't use the P for for phenylalanine and proline is actually special because it's the side chain is actually connected to the amine group too so what I will do is I will draw the carbon from the amino acid and the amine group so you can see right here we have the C that's for the main amino acid and the NH2 so that will be NH2 right here and this is for the main amino acid so all of the structures that I drew here do not include that this bond right here is connected to this carbon right here so now we can go towards the actual side chain and it's actually very simple it's just three carbon groups that are connected making a ring with the amine group so that would be CH2CH2 
and then one more CH2 and we can just connect this to the NH2 and then right here we will have the COOH and the hydrogen for the main amino acid just like this NH2 but this part right here the three carbons are what represent the side chain that I was talking about so just because that looked a little clustered I'm going to draw it again a little bigger so we have here the main carbon of the amino acid. We have the hydrogen and we have the COOH, the carboxylic acid group. And then we have this NH2 here. For the side chain that I will draw in black, we have the CH2, another CH2, and one more CH2. And this carbon is actually connected to this nitrogen. So you can just think of it as another pentagon. And all you need to remember is that you have three different carbons that are connected to both the side chain and the nitrogen. And just to recap nonpolar amino acids, you will have a lot of carbons without OHs or nitrogens, except for tryptophan but because of the size of the of the rings that would like the the side chain actually becomes non-polar so now let's move on to polar amino acids so there are six different types or there are six different polar amino acids we have serine we have theonine we have tyrosine we have cysteine we have asparagine and we have glutamine this polar amino acids unlike the non-polar ones will have a lot of oxygen so that's an easy way to identify them. So let's start with serine. That would be S-E-R. The one letter would be S. So serine is actually just a CH2 followed by an OH. That's what makes it polar. Theonine, that would be T-H-R and T. That's why we didn't use the T for tryptophan. That will just be serine plus another carbon group. So we have CH, one branch is the OH, the other branch is another carbon. Moving on, we have tyrosine. That will be TYR. Again, the T is already taken, so we're going to use Y for this case. And tyrosine is easy to remember because you could just think of phenylalanine plus OH. So that would be CH2. Then we have this ring. And now we have an OH in the end. Cysteine, that would be CYS and C. Cysteine is the same as serine, but except for an oxygen, we're using a sulfur. So CH2, SH. And that is what we call a thiol. Don't confuse that with the thioether that was uh, methionine. This, unlike that, is actually polar. And the last two polar amino acids we have are asparagine and glutamine. And these tend to go together because of how similar their structure is. So asparagine is actually going to be A, S, N. And we abbreviate it with an N. Glutamine is going to be G, L, N. And we abbreviate it with a Q. We don't use A or G because the A is actually used for alanine and the G is used for glycine. So you need to keep in mind that these are the, the, the one letter abbreviation is actually a little different. For the three letter, it's ASN instead of ASP and GLN instead of GLU because those are actually saved for aspartate and glutamate, which are charged amino acids we'll see in the end. So these two amino acids are actually amides. So you will have that carbonyl group with the amine group attached to it. So asparagine is going to be 
a CH2 then we're going to have the carbonyl and the NH2 glutamine is asparagine plus one carbon so whenever you think of glutamine think of plus one so that would be CH2 CH2 and then the same carbonyl and these like the others are polar so what you can see in all of this is that they have oxygen except for cysteine which is actually changed for sulfur and that's what makes them polar unlike the non-polar amino acids they don't have long chains of carbons which is on the other side what makes the non-polar amino acids non-polar now we can move on to the last classification of amino acids and those are the charged ones so we have five charged amino acids three of them are basic two of them are acidic the basic amino acids are a little different from what we've seen so they can be somewhat more complicated to memorize but if you just think of the way the charge works that would have a positive charge so whenever you think of this amino acids you want to think of a positive charge in them and with the acidic ones they would be the opposite so that would be a negative charge and we'll see why that is so lysine is actually abbreviated as lys but we use k as the one letter abbreviation that's because we already use the l for leucine and we use the y for tyrosine so this amino acid is going to have a four chain of carbons followed by an amine so that will be CH2 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 so that's four and then NH3 plus because it this uh, this nitrogen is actually full so that's going to have this plus charge right here and that's what makes it basic and charge of course arginine is going to be a rg and that is going to be abbrevi abbreviated with an r because the a is already taken by alanine and arginine is going to have what we call a guanidinium group so it's going to have a three chain carbon so ch2 ch2 and ch2 then that's going to be followed by a nitrogen a carbon in the middle and then two more nitrogens so this right here is what we call the guanidinium group and this is going to be charged right here lastly we have histidine that's going to be H I S and we can use H and histidine is going to be another of the ringed amino acids so it's going to have a pentagon as a side chain however because of space I want to draw this with a bigger picture so I'm going to move on to the aspartate and glutamate and then I'll come back to histidine so aspartate and glutamate are what we call the acidic amino acids they have a negative charge in them and they actually have different names that could actually help you rem remember how they're classified the other the other name for aspartate is aspartic acid and the other name for glutamate is glutamic acid aspartate is abbreviated asp and we use d for its abbreviation glutamate is g l u and we use e so remember what I told you before about aspartame and glutamine, in which you always want to think of glutamine as plus one. You're going to do the exact same thing for glutamate and aspartate. So glutamate is going to be have one extra carbon when you compare it to aspartate. And you can also use that same plus one thinking to this two abbreviations. E is followed by D, it's just the letter after, so you could also think of it as plus one. So just as asparagine and, glut and glutamine were considered amides, 
Aspartate and glutamates are actually carboxylic acids. So they're going to have pretty much the same structure, but we're going to change that amine group to an oxygen or, or a hydroxyl group. So that will make this a carboxylic acid. So we have CH2 for aspartate. And now we have the carbonyl. And then based on the pH, we have O- minus here. And that's where this negative charge is coming from, making this acidic. Depending again on the pH, this could get um, protonated. So it, it would have an OH instead and it would be neutral. But for glutamate, we're going to do that plus one technique. So CH2. And we have another CH2, and we could just do the same thing. So carbonyl and the O minus. And that's what makes this two amino acids acidic. So now let's move on to histidine. I'm going to move to the next page just so that I can draw this pretty big. We said so we said histidine is HIS and H for the one letter abbreviation. And it's a ringed amino acid that's going to be positively charged, making it basic. So the side chain for this is going to be CH2 followed by the ring. This ring is a pentagon, so it's going to have four different atoms on it. And a trick I use to remember how to draw it is to use one, two, two. So that will mean each of the atoms. So one, we have nitrogen, and we do two, we have nitrogen and then we do two to close it. Both of these will have hydrogens. And we're going to have two double bonds. We're going to have one right here and one right here. And this is actually what makes this positive and basic. So those are the 20 amino acids classified based on polarity and charge. And that will be it for this video. Thank you for watching, and if you liked it and found it useful, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Also, if you have any questions, don't hesitate leaving them in the comment section below.